Hello artists, if you're looking to create a portfolio for the university of your dreams or to present it to a gallery or just have a means of presenting your work in a professional manner, you found the right video. Today we're going to go through researching the best format for your portfolio, the whole design process, and then finally we're going to look at some examples so that you know exactly what to do with your own. So the first obvious thing is a maybe a university application portfolio might differ from you presenting a body of work to a gallery. So make sure that wherever you are presenting a portfolio to, you check the requirements specifically when it comes to educational applications and make sure you tick all those boxes first before understanding how to design and go into that design process. Taking a quick look online, you can see how many different kinds of portfolios exist and the different ways that people have designed each page and presented their unique bodies of work. As a painter myself, I'm going to go through how to design a portfolio for fine artists in this video. But before I do so, I'm going to quickly give you a couple of photography tips when it comes to obviously taking pictures of your work. First thing is lighting is everything. You want flat, bright, ideally natural light. This is, you're not gonna really have an artificial lighting setup at this stage if you're applying or if you're younger or if you're a student, whatever it is. So use natural daylight, you want flat light, and if possible, get your hands on a DSLR because you can shoot manual and then you have control over many aspects when it comes to how your work looks when you're taking a picture of it. You also want to use a tripod when you can, and this can apply to both if you're using a phone camera or if you're using a tripod. So if you do not have a DSLR at hand, you can use your phone. Remember that lighting is basically more important than anything else. Good lighting with a decent phone camera will have decent results. And bear in mind that fine art photography is like a whole speciality in of itself. So if it doesn't look absolutely perfect, don't stress about it too much. You just have to do the best that you can with what you have available. For any smaller works that you have, scan them, find a scanner, go to, I don't know, a local, scanning printing electronics place to get your work scanned because that will be the highest quality image you can possibly get for smaller works now the fun part or the horrible part depending on how you feel about technology and designing and that is the actual design now doing some quick google searches and looking at some example portfolios whether that be animation portfolios design portfolios illustration portfolios fine art portfolios like we'll be doing in this video understanding what kind of context your work exists in and how to present that and looking at a few examples is the best way to begin. As a painter, for this next section, I'm going to jump onto Canva, which is completely free, and showing you how I'd put together a fine art portfolio, including titles and text. So this is a portfolio including both image and text. You can obviously use it for whatever means you want, whether you're a fine artist or not. First of all, my intention behind this portfolio is to promote a series of work, let's say potentially to a gallery or a collector. It can also work for a school application or educational institution application. So just make sure you check the requirements. Um, so I'm looking for a professional presentation that communicates my practice well. For fine art portfolios personally, I like to look at book formats and work in this kind of a, a landscape format so that I have room for both images and supporting text. Using Canva is really straightforward. To start designing, simply search portfolio, click on a landscape layout and remove any elements you're not interested in. You can remove all of them if you just want a blank page. As this is a minimalist style portfolio, all I really needed to do was to adjust image sizes, add some text and some page numbers. Uh, the text I'm using is Gotham. <laughs> I was about to do a Batman voice, but let's not do that. Uh, size 14 and I'm just demonstrating here how you'd go about making a few of the pages that I've put together already. As you can see, each page I've got here is a slightly different format some featuring work alone, some with text accompanying the piece and other pages just purely displaying my art. If any of you are a bit cut on time, maybe that portfolio deadline's coming up and you don't want to play in Canva for like an hour or two or you don't know how to use it or just technology is a headache for you, 
I do have a link to the template. You'll get basically what I'm showing you on the screen right now. Uh, I'll put that in the description and it will cost you the price of a cup of coffee. So do take a look if you want to save the time. Now putting this actual portfolio theory into practice, I've actually just graduated from a postgraduate course myself and the end of year exhibitions that I've just had literally gave me opportunities to be in touch with curators and potential collectors. So I created a PDF that I did send out an email to a few people and got some positive responses. So I based the format of this PDF that I'm showing you right now on what galleries tend to send through to attract collectors and send updates um, on an artist's like new body of work or maybe a show or something like that. Putting fine art aside for a moment, let's quickly take a look at some alternative formats that I've saved for inspiration and break them down a little bit. So these here are, you could say, a few alternative approaches I've come across that may suit your own work more closely, just for those maybe who aren't just strict painters or image makers, or maybe want to do something a little bit alternative. These formats range from more design-based portfolios, some looking at maybe sequential imagery, animation, graphic design, and more. Some of these formats involve more color, alternative ways of presenting images, more text, custom shapes, and almost take on an artistic form themselves. So yeah, that's my general spiel on top of hopefully some helpful inspiration and images that you're seeing on top now. And as you can see, there's a range of ways to present work and only you will know what suits your practice best. And those of you who are fine artists, that link to my fine art portfolio and that template for the Canva, if you do want to save a couple of hours, is there. And if you're not interested, please do leave any questions in the comment section below. And thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. And here is my awkward goodbye.